Next up, we're going to talk about how you graph longitudinal waves. So there's actually two methods. You can either graph displacement versus position or pressure versus position. And uh, I'm going to show you both, but there's a distinct advantage to the first way we're going to do it, which is displacement versus position. Now, uh, what we're graphing here is the displacement of the particles in the medium versus posi their position along this medium. So what we have here is a tube that's got a piston in it, and it's this piston is going in and out and in and out, but it's sending a wave, a traveling longitudinal wave, down its length. And uh, this here is a graph of position of the displacement of the individual particles. And uh, the particles are very displaced at this point. They're very far away from their equilibrium point. Right here, at that point, they're exactly at their equilibrium point. They haven't moved at all. And right here, they're also very displaced, but they're displaced in the opposite direction, which in this case is to the left. So we're graphing the displacement of the individual particles versus their position along the tube. Here's an active demo of that. So what this applet is showing is a longitudinal traveling wave. You can see the compression going off to the right over here uh, with its actual graph of displacement, which looks exactly like a transverse wave. And if I just freeze this for a moment, we'll be able to see what's going on. This blue line right here is being graphed by that point right here. Every point on this longitudinal wave is mapped to one of these dots on this wave. So as I go through steps, you notice this is where, this point is where the blue, this blue line is displaced maximally to the right. And if I continue stepping forward, this is where it's maximally displaced to the left. You can see it's all the way moved to the left, and this is its displacement, which is now negative. And if I keep going, this is where it's at equilibrium right there. That's when, uh, that's about its, its uh, average position at equilibrium. So this is a simply a graph up here of what's going on down here. Now, I'm actually more interested in uh, doing standing waves because it's a little bit easier, in fact, to see the standing waves. I'm going to get rid of that mark, but I'm going to keep marks for the displacement nodes, which are in black, and the displacement antinodes, which are in green. What I want you to do is describe the motion of the longitudinal standing wave displacement nodes. Notice that the displacement nodes, which are indicated on this graph of the displacement, by a node here, the displacement nodes are right here in black. What are they doing? They are just standing still. Now, let's now take a look at what the displacement antinodes are doing. The longitudinal standing wave displacement antinodes, which are represented by this green stuff here. What are the displacement antinodes doing? They're moving maximally back and forth. And here's the graph of them moving maximally back, moving maximally forth. So notice this transverse graph of this thing makes it easy to understand what each of these points on the longitudinal standing wave are doing. By contrast, they are moving back and forth maximally. So you can see where we want to graph displacement of our uh, particles in the medium, uh, simply because when you have a displacement node, it's doing exactly what a node does in a transverse wave. It doesn't move. They stand still. They stay in the same place. And a displacement antinode does just what an antinode does in a transverse wave. It moves back and forth maximally to the extremes. So this is why we prefer displacement. There is, however, a different way to graph these longitudinal waves, and that is graphing pressure versus position, or pressure versus time. Uh, and uh, in this case, this does have a slight advantage in that the points of maximum pressure, like this point right there, what does that represent? A crest represents a point of maximum pressure which is simply a compression. And a trough, 
then represents what? It's a point of minimum pressure, a rarefaction. And the equilibrium point right here, what does that represent? For sounds in air, let's say, on Earth, what is that pressure? It's not zero pressure. It is atmospheric pressure. That point is one atmosphere. Atmospheric pressure. Now, the next thing I want you to notice is that if I graph pressure, that's going to be a whole different thing. Notice that what's happening to the pressure at this displacement node right here. Notice that the pressure is high and then very low, then high and then very low. This displacement node is actually a pressure anti-node. The displacement nodes are where the pressure go up and then down, up and then down. So displacement nodes are actually pressure anti-nodes. If you're graphing pressure, the pressure goes up and down at this point. If you're graphing displacement, which we prefer to do, the displacement will just stay at one spot. It is unchanging. And let's ta also take a look at our displacement antinodes. Look at this green spot. What do you notice about the surrounding lines on this displacement antinode? The surrounding lines are staying the same distance apart. So our displacement antinode, uh, anti what's happening to the pressure? The pressure is staying constant. So a displacement antinode is actually a pressure node where the pressure does not change. See if you get this. The longitudinal wave pressure antinodes happen at the same point as blank. So look at these pressure antinodes where the pressure is going up, then down. The medium is getting squeezed together, then pulled apart maximally. Squeezed together maximally, pulled apart maximally. That is at the same point. Look what's happening to that line right there. It is not moving, so it's the same point as a displacement node. Now, how are longitudinal standing wave displacement nodes like transverse wave uh, nodes? What, what do they have in, in common here? The longitudinal wave displacement nodes how are they like transverse standing wave nodes? They don't move. And how are these longitudinal standing wave displacement antinodes like transverse wave uh, antinodes? They move maximally back and forth.